There we go. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Hope you all are blessed. We have a great God and a great Savior. I'm so excited and happy to see all of you here. And uh, it seems like we were just here, doesn't it? <laughs> Many of us were. All right, if you want to take a look at your bulletins, there's just a couple announcements real quick. Next week is the All Church Breakfast. So um, we're going to meet at 9 a.m. And if you didn't sign up, that's fine. Um, we were just trying to get an idea how many people were coming. Please come. And uh, it's, it's really looking like it's going to be a delicious breakfast. I guess Butch is doing his uh, famous pancakes. Yeah, yeah. Sharon? Um, and after breakfast, we're going to take all this stuff down. You'll be a takedown? Yes. Okay. So if you eat, you got to work. No, I'm just kidding, just kidding. You don't have to help. There also will be a congregational meeting, right, Greg? There will be. And so two things. Jimmy, I know he had to leave because of an emergency today, but I think he wanted us to, the folks who could be helping in the morning, Jimmy will be able to help with the meeting at 7. So folks will be here at 7, folks will be eating, be here at 9. That's AM? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> there are two of those in a day. <laughs> Excellent. All right, sounds good. So there'll be a congregational meeting on the 9th. A lot going on. The mill ministry continues to bless people. The freezer keeps um, getting dispersed to people with homemade meals, and the wonderful people of our church keep refilling it, giving people a warm a meal they can take home and, and uh, enjoy. <clears throat> Any other announcements? All right, I'm going to move the testimonies, just so you know, the testimonies in prayer and the special music below the sermon. Would you uh, please stand together as we join in uh, participating in our call to worship. God is calling us to worship him this morning, the last Sunday of this year. <clears throat> this is from Psalm 20 with a verse out of Psalm 37, 4 as well. In times of trouble. May the Lord answer your cry. May we shout for joy over our salvation and in the name of our God set up our banners. Through the unfailing love of the Most High, we will not be shaken. In times of trouble, we trust in the unfailing love of the Lord. Let's join together and sing as we do our Christmas carol, O come, O come, Emmanuel, because our Savior has come, God is with us.
Let us say the prayer of the day together, followed by the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> you bless us with an abundance of gifts, God, this holy season. Please be seated. I'd like to lead us in a time of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, I, I ask we come before you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, in him alone, in the cross alone. Um, we do not stand, dare stand before you in our own righteousness or performance, but solely on what Jesus has done for us on the cross. We thank you for giving us uh, another year and getting us through it individually and as a people and as a church. As we go into the next year, Lord, please we ask that you would use us in a mighty way. Fill us with your spirit and let us um, just dig deep into your word, the scripture, that we might be transformed and changed more and more into the likeness of Jesus Christ, that our, our good deeds would be motivated by love and gratefulness. Uh, may we learn to love and in the midst of division and um, difficulties and uh, troubles. Help us to uh, be a people that encourage one another and continue to encourage one another. <clears throat> we pray for the many ministries of our church that you would bless them and the volunteers and we pray for the people who um, serve here who no one knows anything about it except them. Um, we just give you thanks for each and every one of them that make all this possible. Even now, with um, the volunteers upstairs, thank you for them and our musicians. Lord, we lift up those in the back of our bulletin and ask your blessing on each and every one. Please um, heal where is needed, encourage where is needed. Help us to minister to them in the ways you've called us to. We pray all these things in the name, the powerful name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm not sure who signed for communion. <clears throat> gathered here on the day after Christmas, and I hope many of you all had a time to celebrate, time to reflect. Um, I don't know about you all, but seeing family and talking to friends was, was truly a blessing to us. And Christmas Day, I don't know about you all over the years, was all about toys and Santa, and uh, it's changed into having memories, into having a chance to remember. When Jesus gave us these emblems, 
he gave us that same opportunity each and every Sunday for us to stop and reflect and to have those memories that in spite of us, in spite of all of our, our flaws, he gave his life for each and every one of us so we have the hope of everlasting life. So as we gather on this morning, we will do like those who gathered in the upper room. And before the emblems were shared, a prayer was offered. Let us bow in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to gather in your house. Thank you for everything that you give us, even those things that we don't remember. And as we take these emblems, help us to remember the ultimate sacrifice that your son gave for each and every one of us. And help us do so in a manner worthy in your sight. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. 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 On that occasion, Jesus took the bread and broke it and passed it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, and do this in remembrance of me until I come again. And on that same occasion, Jesus took the wine and poured it and passed it to his disciples and said, This is the blood of the new covenant, shed for the remission of sins. Drink ye all of it. to thank each and every one of you for the Christmas gift. The Louisa Christian Church family has really blessed us and we're, we're very thankful for each one of you and we love you. And um, I, I mean, I really can't say enough. My words really are not really... You're not going like to get emotional, what, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> but um, words are not enough to thank you. We were really surprised how great the gift was, but we love you all so very much. So thank you again. I, I, wrote, okay. I, wrote, a, I wrote out a couple of things. I um, wanted to thank you all and, and those of you online as well who support us and encourage us and pray for us. Um, your generosity and support in, in the gift, but also through the last almost four years. Um, I'm a man and I bring with me struggles, failures. Um, Sundays when I don't feel like I'm very on the money. Um, and I know I fail some of your expectations as well. And yet, here you are. You're still loving on us, blessing us, and um, praying for us. Thank you. I want to thank the leadership of the church as well, whatever capacity you serve in, um, for caring about what's important, for bringing your differences to the table, and yet holding on to the unity of the faith. You guys have been really working hard. And finally, I want to thank my wife, <laughs> last but not least who is an amazing godly woman Thanks. most amazing godly woman I know who bears with me so many burdens not only do we have a blended family at home but in a lot of ways this is like a blended family and um, Dana just doesn't do the pastor wife thing because it's expected of her well maybe there's a couple times but she does it because she truly loves you all and I'm so grateful to have her by my side so thank you all for the many ways you love us and thank you God for Jesus Christ our Lord I'll you later. okay it's gonna be big
I come before you uh, with a sermonette, so to speak, only one part. And uh, <clears throat> I dare preach out of Revelation with the amount of time I've had to prepare for this. Um, I come with fear and trembling. Uh, it's a difficult book, the most difficult in the Bible, I believe. But yet, um, well, actually it was Dana who gave me this idea, who brought this sermon to inspire me to do it. Um, so, <clears throat> your testimony, the power of a testimony. You know, a lot of Christians live their life <clears throat> without the power, including me sometimes, without the power we could have. And Revelation gives us a view of the power that we have. And the greatest part about it is that it's not about what we have. It's about what God did for us. It's the power of our testimony. And that's central to the Christian faith. It's central to our lives. It's central to how we live each day. It's central to how we think. It's central to our psychology. It's central to our health. <clears throat> Your testimony is how you access God's power. Your testimony is how you access God's power. It's not just in speaking it to other people. I think, first and foremost, it's speaking it to yourself. It's why when I pray, as you've heard me say a hundred of times, um, I always stop my prayers. I come to you in the name of Jesus. It's in His grace, His power, in the work of the cross that I come. So what is our te what are testimonies not? This will help us clarify this. Our testimony is not that you're a good Christian. I've heard people say, I don't want to share my faith with anyone because I, I am such a pathetic Christian. I am such a failure. The people I want to share it with the most are the ones that know most of my faults. That's not your testimony. It's not about you being good or you being a Christian, good Christian. It's not about you um, that you don't struggle in your relationships with other people. It doesn't, your testimony isn't about the fact that you figured out how to relate to the complex in the complex world we live or to complex human beings. Your testimony is not about, about you not sinning. Your testimony is, about, is not about you not sinning. Your testimony is not about that you don't completely blow it sometimes. It's not your testimony. Let it go. Paul says, I forget the past, I go forward. He goes forward in the gospel of Christ. Your testimony, and here's the big one. It's so low. Your testimony is not that you don't battle with guilt. Testimony is that you don't stay awake at night thinking about your regrets, some of the decisions you made. Your testimony is not that you don't live with, like I said, shin, sin or shame. Your testimony is, see, it's all about our focus. Our testimony is how we stand upon the grace of God. It's what you tell yourself and others. Paul wrote in Romans 1, 16 and 17, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. Did you hear that? <laughs> That's where it's at. It's in the power of God of, for salvation to anyone who believes, to the Jews first and also to the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Our testimony is what we believe. It's in what God did. And it's not just a passing belief. It becomes the center of our identity. Not your failures, not your sin, not your mistakes, not your difficulties, not your struggles. Maybe you're in a difficult marriage or a difficult relationship with your kids. It's, none of those things define you. It's what God has done for you that define you, defines you. Here's what I ask you. Will you use this power? 
It's up to you. God won't make you. You can live in your own strength, your own power, your own goodness, your own performance, the things you do right. You can make yourself look pretty good. So can I. Will you live in this power? Charles Spurgeon wrote in the late 1800s, as a, as a way of illustration, he wrote, Consider a gentleman has purchased a very expensive sword with a golden hilt and an elaborate scabbard. He hangs it upon his wall and exhibits it to his friends. Occasionally, he draws out the sword from the sheath. Feel how keen is the edge, he says. The precious blood of Jesus is not meant to be merely admired or exhibited. We must not be content to talk about it only, to extol it and to do nothing with it. We are to use it. In the great crusade against unholiness and unrighteousness, till it is said, and then he quotes Revelation 12, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Our testimony comes up against accusations. You have an enemy. If you don't believe in Satan, it's, it's, we respectfully disagree. You have an enemy, and it could, you can consider it you. You can consider it the negativity in your life, whatever it is. You have someone accusing you in your mind. You did this. Don't you dare come before God. You don't measure up. You're not enough. Your enemy never gets tired of accusing you. If it's not one thing, it will be something else. One memory in me can help make me associate a mistake I made over 10 years ago. Are you kidding me? Guess when that happens? Before I preach, right? Or before I teach, when I'm called on to speak for God. Our testimony comes into play in our own minds when we're accused. The gospel means good news. It doesn't mean a call to battle. It's about an announcement, what's already been done for you. We so often forget that Christianity is not moralism or being good. It's an announcement for everyone. I thought of a story. Imagine I was at sea and I'm drowning in a, in a hurricane, right? And someone comes and rescues me, pulls me out, takes me home. The morning paper doesn't read. Vincent Klug needs help. Sign up here. Does it? It says he was rescued. It says he's singing amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wrench like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Found was blind, but now I see. I've, I've given this illustration before, but I find it very powerful. Imagine you're on, you stand before God and you want to get into heaven and you're behind someone else, like you're second in line. And the person in front of you goes up before God. And, and just, this is by will of illustration, this is not how it works, okay, but by way of illustration, Jesus says, why should I let you into heaven to the guy in front of you? And he says, well, I teach Bible study twice a week. I take care of three of my neighbors who are, you know, they're older and they need help around the house. You know, I, I teach Sunday school. I read my Bible four hours a day. I go to church twice a week. And Jesus says, sorry, it's not enough. And then you go up and you've heard the first guy. So you're like, oh, this is not gonna be good. And Jesus says, why should I let you in? And you say, I got nothing except that you died for my sins. And the angels break out in singing as you enter the pearly gates. 
That's the gospel. It's all about what God has done. For it is by grace you've been saved through faith, not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one can boast. See, we don't boast in ourselves. We only can boast in what God did. So it's about accusations. <clears throat> our testimony is also about, I think it comes into play, to free our minds from discouragement. I think uh, a lot of times people have a hard time forgiving themselves. And sometimes when we, if we do apologize to someone and they don't, we don't feel their forgiveness, they might not forgive you. Are you not forgiven then? Does God not forgive you? Do you have to live with that guilt? I think King David offers us perspective in Psalm 51.4. He says, against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done evil. I have done what is evil in your sight. Psalm 51, 4. Your testimony is where you rest in what God has done. In the 1800s, Eliza Hewitt wrote, Oh Lord, help us take these words in. My faith has found a resting place. From guilt, my soul is freed. I trust the everlasting, the ever living one. His wounds for me shall plead. It's enough for me that Jesus saves. This ends my fear and doubt. A sinful soul, I come to him. He'll never cast me out. My heart is leaning on the word, the written word of God. Salvation by my Savior's name. Salvation through his blood. My great physician heals the sick, the lost he came to save. For me his precious blood he shed. For me, his life he gave. You see, I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died. And that he died for me. Your testimony is not how God has changed you. Your testimony is not how you are a good person. It's not about how happy you are now that you're a Christian. It's not about how good self-esteem you think you have or don't have. These things are not your testimonies. Sometimes we confuse our testimonies with fruit. Fruit happens. Slow process of growth with a lot of weeds in the way. True faith will, will have fruit. It will change you. But that's not your testimony. That's not what it's based on. Your fruit won't save you. Paul has said, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Revelation 12. They overcame him, the accuser, by their testimony and the blood of the Lamb. You are never alone. He will never leave you. No matter what you go through, no matter what trial, no matter what fire you have, he will be with you.
beautiful as usual. I know I'm not the only thankful person in here. <laughs> and I know that I'm not the only one who God is working in my life. <clears throat> this is an opportunity for you to share the hours early, um, something you're thankful for. I know that Dana's going to come up and re read a scripture to get us started. Uh, but if you feel led, I know I've talked to a couple of you in advance um, to come up and share. Uh, that would be wonderful. And in between, um, we're going to do, we could do a stands of amazing grace. Catherine's ready to do that. Or she said she'd even take a request for, to do one stands of a Christmas carol, right? Yep. Okay, so um, these scriptures really are powerful for me. Um, I didn't become a Christian until I was 30. So um, I had a lot of baggage. So this, these verses really show the power of God. Um, in my life and in other people's lives as well, and also his love. So I'm going to read Revelation 12, 10 through 11, which says, Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down, they triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. So I just want to encourage each one of you that we fight from victory, not for victory, because of what Jesus Christ has done for each and every one of us. And we all have a story. We, each and every one of us have a story that we can share with others if we feel led to. But... I just want to encourage each one of you with that. Come on up, Aaron. Wonderful. So, um, I was actually up all night thinking about the things that I was thankful for. And those three things that came to mind were my church family here, my family from home, and my best friend who is upstairs right now. Um, and there's this reading that came, and there's this reading that Pastor Kalu gave me to read. Um, May we all learn to give God credit from his goodness. Your story is the key that can unlock someone else's prison. Only God can turn a mess into a message, a test into a testimony, a trial into a triumph, and a victim into a victory. What God is bringing you through at this very moment will be the testimony that will bring someone else through. No mess, no message. Mm -hmm. If you give it to God, he transforms your test into a testimony, your mess into a message, and your misery into a ministry. Mm -hmm. And the things that I was thankful for were my family, my best friend, and my church family. Um, the reason for those three things, um, my church family helped us to welcome my sister home from when she was first diagnosed with her illness. And they lined the streets with posters, from the cards to the calls and the hot meals to make sure we were all taken care of and when you guys welcomed her home again. And we were all on cloud nine and that felt amazing. My best friend, um, from if we're on the phone for two or three hours a night, and planning our future together um, and talking about what we're going to do with it um, is amazing. And my family. For my 19 years I've been on this earth, you guys have raised me from day one. And I cannot be more thankful either from the nights from college and working so hard on things that drive me absolutely crazy to the birthday parties and the sleepovers and the endless love that you guys have given me is absolutely amazing and I cannot be more thankful for my mom, for my dad, and for my sisters who drive me crazy but, lo but love me endlessly anyway. So that is what I'm thankful for.
Any him requests? <laughs> Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. All right. Right after the it. next testimony, how about? There's yes, there's a testimony coming up. Oh, excuse me. I'll look it up right now. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Pastor. Anybody who doesn't think God isn't at work every minute, every day, I could not get the song Amazing Grace out of my mind <laughs> yesterday. It's... Uh, Incredible. Um, I want to start off by saying thank you to everyone for welcoming, wel welcoming me to this church. I've been coming here since, since September. I've met some amazing people. I've made some wonderful, wonderful friends. Um, Thursday night Bible study is a highlight of my week. And um, the Wednesday night boost is as well, so thank you so much for doing that. Um, I have a hard time getting through this, so if you would just uh, bear with me. My story, I'm sure, is not unique to a lot of people that come into faith later in their life. Um, but it is my story of how I turned to God and accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. It's not just my testimony. It's also a personal testimony of, of God's amazing grace. Um, in August of this year, it seemed like everything was falling apart. Um, I was searching for something to fill my life, something that would give me joy and happiness. The thought that I would find this in God never occurred to me. I thought I could find what I was looking for in earthly things. You know, we could all use a little more money, a little more companionship. Um, I was looking for, in all the wrong places, I was looking for it in sinful things. But then God intervened. Um, a friend of mine, who herself had been through a lot, shared with me no intention to help. She had no idea what I was going through. Just out of the blue, sent to me a, a rather unique interpretation of the life of Jesus. And as I watched ever more intently, the episodes in that series, it suddenly and surprisingly occurred to me. The way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the answer. And then, with no preparation or forethought, on August 24th, at 8.45 p.m., I went into my room, I fell to my knees at my bedside, and I prayed this prayer. I said, God, I surrender. I am tired of chasing after the things that I want. I don't even know what that is. I accept fully all that you desire for me to have. I don't care what that may be. I'm yours, O oh Lord. Do with me what you will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And right then, right at that very moment, God gave to me a feeling of such joy and peace and clarity. There's no way I can describe it. And my purpose became clear. Worship God. 
bring glory to him. And everything at some point in God's time, one glorious day, everything is going to be just fine. And now he is methodically taking me apart. Discarding the broken bits and pieces and putting in his love. His love he sends through his friends right to me. He's putting new friends in my life. He's teaching me to pray early and often. Teaching me to think before I act. That was not, not a strong suit of mine for many years. And while I struggle to understand at times exactly what he wants me to do, through the study of his word and gaining new knowledge of his amazing grace, his unfailing love, his undying devotion to me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I am saved. Amazing grace, if you please. And watch me cry. <laughs> you got it. So how often do you get to hear from two Gregs on one Sunday? <laughs> so thank you, Greg. That was very powerful. Um, what I'm grateful for this Christmas is perspective. And I'm going to struggle too. Um, for me, I was fortunate, how many of you have heard this story before, that I, you know, I grew up in the church. I grew up in a Church of Christ church. I grew up in a non-instrumental church, and I'm very grateful for music and the piano, because if you've ever been in, I mean, I, I, I love folks who can do that, but having 70 people not singing in the same key at the same time is <laughs> maybe a, a blessful noise to God, but it was not to me. Um, 
and I, I did all the right things. I did everything I could. Um, my senior year in high school, my dad got cancer. And I had done everything right. I had tried to, to read my Bible. I tried to go to church. I knew God would take care of me. Uh, he did, but not in the way that I thought. I uh, lost my father about this time of year. Uh, I know for many of you all, there are certain times of the year that are tough for y'all. Um, I wish I could say I could took, took that gloriously, but I was angry with God. And I'm ashamed to say I cursed God, and I cursed him more than once. I, too, tried to find happiness in, in other things. For many years, I tried to find happiness in other things. Um, one thing, if folks know me, know I always have a plan. Um, I, I um, always joke to say I was a Boy Scout for two weeks, so I was always prepared. Um, that I, um, I, I grew up in a rough Boy Scout troop. They beat up the Scout Master, and I was like, I'm the youngest one, I'm out of here. Um, so I, I made it two weeks. Um, but I always have a plan, and my plan with my dad didn't work. Um, and I looked in all the wrong places. And to this day, I, I'm still amazed. There's this individual when I was in college, her name is Joyce. A, I, I can't even say she's a very dear friend. She just passed through my life somewhere. But she got me going back to church. Uh -huh. And I fought it tooth and nail. Um, but at once I suddenly realized, not my will, but that will be done. Life was so, so much easier. Um, and I wish I could say I've learned that lesson and I, and I do it well every day. <laughs> but I struggle every day with that. Um, but I, I thank God for the perspective. Um, Yesterday was Christmas, and open presents with the kids. It was awesome. It was great. And I thought about calling my mom. My mom passed away. Um, I was angry for a little bit. I was disappointed for a little bit. But I know she's in a much better place. And just like Greg said, that place waits for all of us. And whatever we endure during our, our lives here, I think our, if one of the things that I think God has helped me with my perspective, again, is that will be done, not my will. And I think part of that is we can't change the world, but we can make somebody else's, we can affect one person every day. Yes. And if if we can do that, I think we'll all feel God's presence more. Thank you all for letting me share. One powerful testimony after another. What an amazing Sunday. Time for one more quick one. I meant testimony. We can do how great thou art, too. <clears throat> of course. Anyone else want to share? What's this? Painful silence? I sense it. Well, God is great. And uh, that is an amazing, amazing hymn. Let's join together and sing that. Absolutely. Would you stand? One stanza.
rest for your soul. There is peace for you and me when we just let it go and just let the truth become what it is. That before God, we need a savior. It's okay. It's okay to have shortcomings and sin and failures because it's all based on what Jesus did for us on that cross. Go out believing in that power, the power of Jesus Christ who gave his life for you. Let that be your life testimony. Go in peace.